From the campus of Volunteer State Community College, this is Inside Politics. Hello and welcome to Inside Politics. I'm Nancy Hoskins. More than three decades after serving the people of Tennessee as the 43rd governor, Republican Winfield Dunn is still crisscrossing the state, shaking hands and no doubt bending a few ears. Governor Dunn has added author to his list of accomplishments with his new book, From a Standing Start, My Tennessee Political Odyssey. And we are honored once again to have him join us here on Inside Politics. Thanks for being here. It's such a pleasure, Nancy. Thank you very much. You've been a very busy man with this book tour. How long have you actually been out on the road promoting this, this wonderful book? I'd say four or five weeks now. Uh, we've had it from the publisher, and I've been fairly busy. I've been in uh, a number of areas, Memphis, Bull recently, and have had the pleasure of sitting down and signing my name to people who are nice enough to want to read a little bit about mm -hmm. Tennessee history at a time when I played a, a, a minor part. Well, it is a very wonderful book. Toward the end of the show, we will give you a list of, or an opportunity to find a list of some of those dates where you can meet with Governor Dunn and have your book signed. Um, I have been reading the book. It's, it's very funny. It's sweet. It's historically accurate. It's large. How long have you been working on this book? I've probably been working on that book five years. And it began just because I thought it was time for me as a granddad to sit down and tell the story of this wonderful adventure that Betty and I have enjoyed over these years so that my grandchildren could understand it and perhaps even their children at some point know a little bit about what happened to their grandparents and great-grandparents at this period in our lives. <clears throat> it's been fun, and I like the way you describe the book. I say it's a history of that adventure, but you know, I also think it's a little bit of a love story, if I could say so. Yeah, absolutely. If I hadn't had a beautiful Tennessee girl who loved me enough to let me venture out, and walk away from a busy dental practice mm -hmm. to see if I could play a role in state government. If she hadn't loved me enough to do that, I would never have done it. Mm -hmm. And another part of it is that as I traveled across our state from Memphis, where I lived, I fell in love with the state of Tennessee, and I really did. I just, I was just enchanted by the people, the beauty of the landscape, the history, that is so rich mm -hmm. in our wonderful state. Uh, so it was a love story. And there are, as you said, some humorous things. I tried not to leave out very much, and there are some things that'll make you chuckle. Absolutely, I definitely chuckled a few times. And we wanna talk about your sweet Betty in, in a little bit more, Good. but first let's talk a little bit about the book. Okay. It is written by you. This is not as told by you. You, uh -huh. you wrote the book, which is evident if you've ever talked to you, because you, you write like you talk. Um, do you, do you have experience in writing? Have you ever written anything else? I imagine a lot of people are going to wonder, why hasn't he written anything before? How nice. Well, as a matter of fact, eight or ten years ago, I wrote a little 60 or 70 page booklet, as it turned out, for my grandchildren. My grandchildren have grown up uh, anywhere but my native state of Mississippi. And I wanted them to know a little bit about Aunt Etta, Uncle Burke, <laughs> Aunt Elizabeth, the people whose blood flow through their veins, Pappy. but whom they never knew. Pappy, <laughs> well, you have read that book. I wanted them to know a little bit about Pappy Leggett, so I wrote that little thing, and they seemed to enjoy it. But let me mention, I wrote on the outside of the cover of this story of my life as a boy and uh, an adult. For my grandsons, I said, boys, I didn't tell it all. <laughs> <laughs> had to leave a few parts out. I had to leave a few things out. That's right. Well, it was that history in Mississippi that led you to, to politics. It you, was. You were uh, quite literally drenched in the political scene as a young boy. Is that a little bit about the title, From a Standing Start? What does the title mean? The title uh, came to me uh, because I read, as I was running for governor, uh, in the primary in 1970, I read a newspaper article which described where each candidate 
stood at, at that particular time in, in, in the race. And I was the last one to be mentioned, but the writer said, and Dr. Dunn from Memphis, from a standing start, seems to be making some progress. Mm -hmm. And I just liked the phrase, from a standing start, because that's really what it was, Nancy. My political adventure was actually launched out of a little dental office and a Sunday school room. Uh, I love politics, always have enjoyed it, and I feel so very much that every citizen should be involved because their lives are touched so deeply by those who represent them in government. Tennessee didn't have two viable political parties. We were essentially a one-party state. I fell down on the side of the Republican Party just because I admired uh, President Eisenhower, I admired uh, a senator named Barry Goldwater, and found myself meeting Republicans over in Shelby County. But the campaign itself took root out of my friends at, in Sunday school, my friends and patients in my dental office, and as I began to get seriously interested, they were the ones who flocked to my side. And they weren't political people. They were just housewives. They were, they were businessmen and women. And I don't know that Tennessee has ever seen a major race in which more people who were totally innocent of all of the intrigue of politics come together to help someone who was willing to take a chance and step out. So it truly was different in that respect. I tried to capture that in the book because from an historical perspective, there are people, students, who in the future will look back on those years and say, wow, after 50 years of nobody uh, from the Republican Party, here comes this fellow from Memphis and he happens to get to be governor. I wanted them to be able to understand how it all happened. Mm -hmm. It certainly wasn't a product of any machine. It wasn't a product of any uh, embedded political faction. It was just a product of the people. <laughs> and I took a lot of pride in that. Well, and, and you've re often referred to yourself as a citizen politician. You, you were not only willing, you, were, you must have been incredibly brave, as well as your young family <laughs> and wife, to, to leave. I mean, a lot of people would look at you and say, you must be crazy to leave. You know, you were Dr. Dunn, the dentist, and, and you, you dropped it all yeah. because of this passion yes, for serving the people. I, explain that to the people that say, huh? <laughs> Well, it is a little hard to understand, but I had been involved there in Shelby County in the political world because it was more of a hobby to me. Uh, rather than go play golf or go fishing, I would go to a political rally. Uh, I would help sit down to try to talk someone into being a candidate. And we were trying to build two parties in Shelby County. The way it was in those years, uh, whoever was nominated in the August primary was pretty well assured that they would be elected in November. And November comes and there are names on the ballot, but people don't have a choice because there's only one uh, category, Democrat. And I wanted to be sure people had a choice. And I don't care whether you call them Democrats and Republicans, Pharisees, Sadducees, whatever you want to call, competition is the essence of what's made our country such a great place. And I just, being a political uh, uh, citizen, politician maybe, I just wanted to do what I could to see if we couldn't make it so that people would have a choice in November when they elected their public officials, the people who spend their tax m money. And uh, it all grew out of that actually. 